so before moving to this uh, standard diodes uh, i need to uh, brief out uh, what's actually peak inverse voltage so yes here yeah, now i am recording so this is peak inverse voltage so piv so this peak inverse voltage is actually the uh, reverse voltage reversed maximum voltage so that diode can bear okay so the so these are very important terms reversed and maximum voltage so uh, by simple definition it's like a peak inverse voltage is the reverse maximum voltage that diode can bear or that time, uh, this particular diode can tolerate so this is the uh, very important term so this is actually a reverse voltage not a forward voltage reverse voltage so reverse voltage means if you want to evaluate the peak inverse voltage so the diode should be diode should be in reverse bias region to evaluate the PIV peak inverse voltage. So you cannot estimate or you cannot evaluate the peak inverse voltage when this diode is in forward bias region because this particular voltage itself defined as a reverse voltage. So then reverse means your diode should be in reverse bias region. So this should be basically in reverse bias region. And the uh, second highlighted point is it should be a maximum voltage. So there may be different le uh, levels of voltage may appear across this diode when it gets reversed by us but we need to find what is the maximum so this is the the other key point so it should be reversed so this particular voltage is basically measured one the, once this dot get reversed by us so and the maximum voltage which we can or which that particular supply uh, fed to the system so for example if you uh, take this uh, very simple scenario so we have a diode and a resistor so this is your signal this is the input so this input is something like that so this is vm this is minus vm so this is your diode and this is your resistor okay so we know that during this uh, positive cycle during this positive cycle so this diode is forward bias so during this positive cycle this diode is forward bias so this is a non factor and during this negative cycle so that definitely should be in reverse bias so then if you consider the positive cycle you cannot find out the peak inverse voltage because so the peak inverse voltage itself defined as a reverse voltage so then we have to select the second block so we have to consider the negative cycle and need to find out the voltage appear across the diode so then the uh, so we have to consider this block so then the input is something like that
So then the input signal is basically to the downward direction. So you have minus here, plus here, and this is your in. So this is the uh, voltage across the diode. So then by looking at this one, we can simply say that Vd plus Vi, if you apply So if you apply culture voltage though, Vd plus Vi should be equals to zero. So then from this, we can simply say that Vd is actually minus Vi, which is a kind of a negative quantity. So then that should be reverse pass. So then from this, we can simply say that the uh, voltage across the diode would be simply aligned with the input. So this input is basically, your input is basically vary according to this Vm sine omega t. So then what is the maximum voltage that input can take? So Vi max equals to Vm. So if your input is basically behave as Vm sine omega t, so Vm is the peak voltage and the maximum voltage would be definitely Vm. This is Vm. So from this, then we can claim that, so across the diode when it is reverse bias so we basically apply the input voltage across the diode when it's get reverse bias so the maximum of this particular voltage should be equals to vm which is the peak voltage of the input signal so from this basic uh, calculation we can simply claim that the peak inverse voltage should be at least equal or greater than Vm. Because from this point we can claim that the input signal the uh, actual voltage appear across the diode would be equal to the input signal input voltage. So then we know that the maximum voltage which we can get it from the input is Vm. It, if it is a positive cycle, so we basically get a plus Vm. If it is a negative cycle, we basically get a minus Vm. So then from this to from this one and this one, we can claim that the peak inverse voltage or the reverse maximum voltage that that should bear is Vm. So hence we can claim that the peak inverse voltage of the diode should be at least equals to the maximum voltage of the input signal for this particular circuit. Okay, so then if you want to find out a diode, for this is a kind of a half-wave rectified diode, so then you can find out a diode which basically can tolerate a reverse voltage of Vm, which is the maximum voltage of your input signal. For example, so you select a diode having a peak inverse voltage of 20 volt. So it means you can basically feed 20 sine omega t signal. So you can basically feed 20 sine omega t. So the peak voltage Vp would be 20 volt. So if you go beyond that, so for example, if you basically apply Vm equals 35 sine omega t. For this particular circuit, we know that during this uh, negative cycle, during this negative cycle, 
when this diode is reversed bias, the voltage applied across the diode would be equal to Vi, which is equal to 35 sine omega t. So the maximum voltage is equal to 35, which is basically at the peak. So this particular diode has a peak in a soft 20 volt, but we are applying 35 volt across the diode when it is reverse bias and it basically at its maximum at this point. So then 35 is basically bigger than 20. So once you apply 30 volt, basically this diode get burns when it is reversed. So it means your depletion region is simply destroyed. So keep in mind, so if you are asked to evaluate the peak inverse voltage of a particular diode, so you should consider the reverse scenario and find out the maximum voltage which the uh, the maximum voltage which appear across this diode terminal. So it should be, so the diode should be at least maintain that voltage as a peak inverse voltage. So ideally for the safe side, we should uh, basically select a, a diode with a peak inverse voltage, which is basically greater than the maximum voltage of the input signal. So it's depend on for this particular scenario, the diode is basically handling its in, uh, the input voltage. So for this particular circuit, the diode voltage is actually equals to the input voltage. In that case, it should be like the uh, peak inverse voltage of the particular diode should be at least equals to the peak voltage of the input signal. So for the safe side, we can have a kind of a uh, diode which has a higher peak inverse voltage than your maximum voltage of the input signal. So it's depend on the circuit to circuit, but keep in mind if you ask to evaluate the peak inverse voltage, so you basically consider the reverse scenario and find out the maximum. So, so this is the uh, point which I want to highlight here. If you have any questions, so you can ask, or you can text it or chat, send it to the chat box. So no questions. Okay, so uh, so we have this rectifier diode. So these are the diodes which we discussed already. So we found that so this rectifier diodes basically operate in their first quadrant. Okay. So this is the new voltage. So this is the rectifier diode. So these are basically operating this uh, first quadrant. So normally we don't care about the negative region or these, uh, this block because we know that it's reverse bias and open circuit. So we basically we utilize this first quadrant or the forward region to make this diode uh, use effectively. So likewise in center diodes, so this is the other way around. So other So this is called the Senna voltage. We said or we said K depending on the text. So this is uh, so these are the two parameters. So this point basically I is at minimum. 
So this is I Z maximum. And the Sena is basically operate during this negative region or the third quadrant. So this is the simple difference. So if it is a rectified out, we basically use its forward region. So if it is a sin and diode, we effectively utilize its reverse region to make it effective. So this is the very simple difference between the rectified and and sin and diode. So if it is a normal rectified out, so the operating region is basically the first quadrant. So then we basically consider the forward bias operation. If we are look, uh, using the center diode, we basically use its third quadrant, which means, so then center diode is ideally reversed by us to get it maximum output. Okay, so the, keep in mind, so uh, for the normal rectified us, we basically use the forward pass region. If it is a center diode, so we basically use this reverse pass region. Okay, so this is the very simple difference between the uh, general purpose rectified and the center diode. Okay. So the symbol would be uh, like this. So here we have this kind of, uh, so the polarities are very similar. Here it's plus and minus, here also plus and minus. So the different is, so we know that to make this rectified our defect, you have to apply plus voltage here and minus voltage here. So then only this diode get forward pass. So if you want to make this particular diode, the center diode to make it reverse pass, you need to basically apply minus and plus. So then only this become reverse pass. So then the, it means like the actual voltage appear across the center diode would be a kind of a negative voltage or a reverse voltage. So then only you can see a kind of a uh, this particular center diode operates in its reverse region. If it is a rectified diode, you basically apply uh, a positive voltage, which is basically in line with the polarity of the diode. So then we know that this rectified diode gets forward bias. So then it means like if it is a center diode, so this is the basic powering arrangement. So this is minus, this is plus. And this is minus and this is plus for the center diode. So if you feed a negative voltage across the center diode, so then this center diode is ideally more push into this reverse bias region and it operates accordingly. Okay. So keep in mind, this is a key point. Synodard is operating basically in reverse bias region. Okay. So then we think of how we can model this synodard. So this is your center. So this is your center diode. So we know that if you apply your positive voltage to here and negative voltage to here, whether this is a negative terminal and this is the positive terminal. So then you can, if this center is actively operating, so there should be a kind of a center current flow through the center diode. And the applied voltage is basically Vz. Let's assume maybe it's the applied voltage is Vz. Okay. So then if you consider this characteristic uh, uh, 
of this centered arrow vi characteristic so this is actually a vi characteristic for the negative region or the reverse region reverse bias region so uh, if we apply a negative voltage across the diode until this negative voltage reaches to this value we said k so you can't see any current so during this segment so the center current is basically zero so whether the voltage is negative so the voltage in between v z k and zero so the diode center diode is basically showing zero current through that so it means so the center is basically off so no current means so we can assume that this is basically in off region so if it is o we can assume that sena is kind of this open circuit mode so this during this region between v z k and zero so there won't be any current flow through the sena diode and the uh, actually we can model this diode as an open circuit element so what happens if we move the voltage beyond v z k if you move this v z the applied voltage across the center beyond this amount so then the operating point of the center diode simply moves along this so once you move uh, increase your input voltage or the voltage appear across this diode which is vz beyond this vz k which is the uh, threshold value here so then this operating point of the center diode basically move along this vertical line so what is the meaning of this vertical line so if you uh, can easily identify the property of this one so if this operating point is moving along this vertical line means so center is basically maintaining fixed voltage of v z k and vary the current between i z minimum and i z maximum so this is the behavior of the sinner once you increase your voltage beyond v z k so it basically maintain a fixed voltage across its terminal which is equal to v z k it maintain a fixed voltage across its terminal which is equals to v z k so this is basically known as a center voltage so this is center voltage so if you get the center diode so in that outer block it basically mention the center voltage like it's like 3.3 volt 2.7 volt 5.4 volt likewise so the center voltage is simply uh, indicating the the outer block of the center diode so this center diode is something like that so you have black line so it's something like so in this outer cylinder it basically marked with 3.3 so this is the appearance of the cylinder you can google it and see uh, what what's the uh, real appearance of the cylinder so then you can simply see that the, the uh, so this uh, center voltage is basically indicating the outer cylinder 
so this v z k the center voltage and like if we apply a voltage which is beyond the center voltage so diode itself maintain a center voltage across its terminal and adjust its current it means like the center can maintain a fixed voltage across its terminal and if you further pump or increase your voltage or if you increase your current so the center can absorb this excess current so it means like uh, so let's assume this is the operating point of the center q is it one so if you further increase your voltage or if you further increase your current so normally we know that if it is v equals ir if you increase your so this is v equals ir case if r is a constant if you increase i definitely we should increase okay but this particular device we can increase the current while keeping v at a constant so the across its terminal it can maintain a fixed voltage while adjusting this current flow through the center or else so this particular diode can manage a fixed voltage across its terminal while adjusting or absorbing this variability of this current so if you increase the current what we that particular center can simply do is it can move its operating region to this q is a 2 and in adjust its the additional current and keep the voltage fixed okay so this is the difference between the normal diode and a center diode so the center can if your center is basic normally center is operating reverse region in the reverse region if you apply a voltage which is basically greater than its center voltage so the add the additional effects increment of current or decrement of current of current can be absorbed to the device so it means center can absorb this kind of a variation of current while keeping the voltage across its terminal is a constant okay so this is the major difference between the normal diode and the center diode okay so now this is the diode we basically apply a voltage across center which is equal to vz now we know that during this negative region if the applied voltage v is a applied voltage v is a is less than v is a k it means the operating point of the center diode basically lie on this horizontal line so then you can't see any current flow through this one so it, it means like so it acts as an open circuit element once you move the operating point of the center diode beyond this limit so then we basically maintain a fixed voltage of v is it k and a kind of a current so then we can model this some into this form okay so this is your center volt diode we can replace the center diode with the ideal rectifier diode plus the fixed dc source of v z k so see whether we can uh, explain this uh, operation of this center
okay so what happens now this is a ideal diode so this is the voltage across this ideal pd i okay so if you apply curve of voltage law for this case we can simply say that v is a should be equals to v d i the voltage drop across the ideal diode plus v is a k okay so then v d i the voltage across the ideal diode should be v is a minus v is a k so if if this is the ideal diode we know that to make it forward pass or to make it conductive to make it conductive v d i should be greater than or equal to zero so i am referring this ideal diode not the center diode now we model the center diode as a pack of ideal diode and a fixed dc source of v z k now in this particular model we don't have any center so there is a ideal diode plus a series voltage source of v z k okay so now i am referring the uh, conditions which we should maintain to make this ideal diode forward pass so if this ideal diode get forward pass you can see a current flow through the center diode so if this is forward pass if this diode get forward pass we know that there is a current flow through this one so then this current is actually the current flow to the center diode so to make this conductor you have to make turn this diode on to make it forward pass so this is the condition so the voltage appear across the diode ideal diode should be greater than or equal to zero so then only it get forward pass so from this one we can simply say that v z minus v z k should be greater than or equal to zero v z should be greater than o equals to v z k so this is the condition we need to satisfy to make this ideal diode forward pass so to make this ideal diode forward pass you have to maintain a voltage across the center which is v z should be greater than or equal to the center voltage okay so then we we can basically find two constraints one is v z should be greater than no v z k so this is the center voltage so then your center is on if the voltage appear to the center is basically greater than no equals to the center voltage so then center gets on otherwise so the center is off so it means like uh, during this region this is off during this region it is on okay hope it's clear so these are the conditions we can look into when this center diode is in the circuit so if if your voltage across the center is greater than its center voltage keep in mind initially it should be reverse pass so then it means like if you have a center diode in the circuit definitely the external power supply or external voltage should be appear across the center diode in opposite polarities like in this model so otherwise you cannot make this center diode reverse bias so once you apply voltage to make it reverse bias so the voltage appear across the center diode should be greater than or equal to the center voltage which is defined in the data sheet or which is basically indicating the center diode so if you apply voltage which is equal or greater than that value so then sena is act as a switch which is in on state so then it means like 
So if this is forward back, so ideally this is short circuit. So then Sena is basically act as a fixed DC source. If you make this condition true, it means this ideal diode get forward bias and we can replace the ideal diode using a short circuit element. So then the Sena is basically act as a fixed DC source of V. Okay. So otherwise, so this ideal diode get reversed and you have this kind of open circuit scenario. So then there won't be any current flow through this one and you can't see any effective action across this center. Okay. So then during this block, it's open circuit and during this block, it's basically apply kind of a wall fix DC source of VK. So these are the two regions or two states if you are considering a Sena diode. Is it clear or do you have any questions? Okay, so then, so we'll go to this uh, first exercise, EX1. So here we have this kind of a circuit. So we have a resistor, so then a kind of a LED. So then we have a center diode. Then we have this rectifier diode. So then we have again a center diode. And so you take this out, and this is <laughs> the out one. Yes. So now we have a 40 volt supply. And this is actually 1.3 kilo ohm. So we have a LED here. So we have LED. So this is the center diode one. This is a normal diode. So this is the center diode two. So this basically has a center voltage of 3.3 volt. So this is basically a six volt center. So this is a silicon diode. So if it is a silicon diode, we know that the knee voltage is basically 0.7. And in the question, it basically mentioned that the uh, LED, once it get forward bias, it maintains a four volt drop across it. Okay, so these are the information given here. So you are asked to evaluate the VO1 or V out one and V out two. So we have LED having a forward voltage of four volt and two centers having center voltages of six volt and 3.3 volt. And we have a silicon rectifier diode which has an E voltage of 0.7. So then we basically need to find out the current flow through the network. So if there's a current flow through this network, it means, so whatever the elements connected in series should be on or conductive. Isn't it? So if one of the element is basically off or open circuit or non-conductive, 
So then there won't be any closed loop and you can't see a kind of a current flow through this entire network. So the simple logic is if you want to observe a kind of a current flow through this network, definitely LED should be on. Center one and center two also on and D also on. So these all should be on. So if one of this element is off, basically, for example, this center is off. If this center is off, so it means like here you have an open circuit. So then there won't be any current flow through this network. So the simple logic behind this is to observe a certain current flow through this network. So this four elements, LED, two centers, and the rectifier that should be on. So to make it on, but by looking at this one, see LED is a kind of a, a normal diode. So this is basically, uh, so we apply a positive voltage to here, and negative voltage to here. So this LED is basically on because we are applying a forward voltage. So what about the silicon diode? So we basically apply positive voltage here. So this positive here, negative here. So this is ideally should be forward pass. So these two centers, if you consider, so we are applying positive voltage to the negative terminal of the center. So then definitely this center one and center two are basically should be in their reverse region. So, so then, for this general purpose rectifier and LED, we basically apply a positive voltage or forward voltage to make it on. At the same time, we apply a negative voltage across center one and center two to make it off. So make it on because once we apply a reverse voltage across center one and two, so then definitely they basically on if we provide the sufficient voltage. Sufficient means uh, with the previous discussion, so if this is a center, so we should basically maintain at least six volt across its terminal to make it on. Similarly, for this center, we should maintain at least 3.3 volt to make it on. So if this is a silicon diode to make it forward bias, we should at least maintain a 0 0.7 voltage drop across the diode. And in the question, it is basically given that this, if this LED is on, so it maintain a 4 volt across this LED. So if all these elements are on, so this basically maintain 4 volt, this center maintain 6 volt, this the uh, rectifier that maintains 0 0.7 volt, this basically maintains 3.3 volt. So altogether it's maintained, it needs, this is 414 volts to make it conductive. So if you maintain a 14 volt across these two terminals, A and B, or this is ground means if you maintain a 14 volt here. So basically we are providing sufficient voltages to make this LED on, uh, to make this two centers on, to make the silicon dart forward pass. So this is the voltage you don't you need to maintain across this terminal so if you maintain a 14 volt at the node a so then basically this is ground then entire voltage appear across these uh, four elements and this 14 volt is more than sufficient to make these elements conductive or push into on region so then if you apply 14 volt to this node a we basically make it success and we can on 
or eliminate the LED. Then on the two signals, Z1 and Z2, having the six volt and three volt, three point three volt signal voltages, and this particular silicon diode also. So then, if you maintain this minimum sufficient voltage of fourteen volt at node A, so these elements are conductive. So then you can observe a kind of a current flow through this resistive part. So that current basically, so that current I is basically equals to 14 mi 40 minus 14 divided by 1.3K. So this is the current. So it's equals to 20 millimeters. So hope it's clear. So if you want to see a kind of a current flow through the network, so these all four elements should be on. Either one of these is basically off, you cannot maintain a kind of a closed circuit and you can't see any current flow through this one. So to maintain these all set of elements on, you have to at least maintain a 14 volt at node A. So based on that, we can basically evaluate the current flow through the network. So then it's equals to 40 minus 14 divided by the resistance. So you basically evaluate the current flow through this. So the voltage drop is basically 14 minus 14. And if you divide it from the resistance, so it gives the current flow through the resistor. So this is IR. So that current basically flow through this entire network can ground it. So then if you manage a 20 milliampere current flow through this resistor, it means basically we maintain a 14 volt at node. Okay. So hope it's clear. So if you have any questions, just drop it to this uh, chat box. Okay, so we'll move to the exercise two. So we have this kind of circuit. So this is system. This is a center diode having the center voltage of 20 volt. This is R. This is a silicon diode having an E voltage of 0.7. And this is your input. So input is basically like this kind of a sinusoidal having a peak voltage of 60. And in addition to that, so it basically uh, gives some information about the system. So this system basically has an infinite resistance. So it says that the uh, system has a high input impedance. Input impedance means basically if you see from this side, so this system shows a kind of an infinite resistance. So it means if you uh, see from this side, if you see a kind of an infinite resistance, it means you can't see any current flow through this. So it basically zero. Because so from this end, you see a kind of an infinite resistive path. So the system itself shows a kind of an infinite resistive element to the outer circuit from this, if you see the circuit from this end, so it basically shows a kind of infinite resistance. So then you don't see any current flow through this system. So this system basically need a kind of a voltage to maintain across these two terminals. 
So this system basically needs a kind of an external fixed DC voltage to drive the circuit. No any current from this particular circuit. So this system wants a kind of a fixed voltage. So there may be additional circuit component inside the system to uh, get the required current, but for this particular circuit, this circuit is basically managing a fixed DC source, DC voltage to the system to operate as it wish. So the requirement of current is basically not provided through this given circuit. So there may be additional circuit inside the system which gives this required amount of current which needs to drive the circuit. But this the external circuit which is basically illustrated in this figure gives a fixed voltage to drive the system. So if this is a, having an infinite impedance, so it means no current flow through this one. So this is zero. So it means if this current is zero, we can model a circuit or we can simplify this circuit to this format. So it basically maintain a voltage across this. So this voltage is basically feed to the system. So we can simplify this circuit to this form by assuming this R infinity, infinite input impedance. Okay. So due to this in, uh, high or infinite input impedance, we can simply remove the system from the rest of the circuit and simplify the circuit to this model. So now this is the circuit we need to analyze. So here your input is this. <coughs> so what happens if we apply a positive cycle? It means this is plus, this is minus, we are applying this kind of a voltage. So what happens to this center diode? So we are applying positive voltage to the negative terminal of the center. So what happens? So this is basically we are applying a reverse voltage to the center. So if it is, if the applied voltage is more than 20 volt, ideally center should be on. Because to on the center, we need to maintain at least its center voltage of 20 volt. So we basically apply a reverse voltage across the center. So it means like this uh, center is now in reverse region. So if you maintain at least a 20 volt across the center out to the reverse direction, so the center gets on. So to make it on, to make it on, it means center on, we need to have at least 20 volt across its terminal. So this is there, Sim, uh, we can brought it from the theory. So we have silicon diode here. So the terminals are, this is minus and plus. We basically like this negative terminal to this negative polarity and positive to the positive polar potential. So ideally, this is basically in forward reader. By looking at the 
applied voltage. <coughs> so now, if you want to generate a current, if you want to generate a current flow through this network, I, if you want to maintain a current flow through this network, so this we are applying a reverse voltage to the Sena, then Sena should make it on. At the same time, this diode also should be in forward region and make it on. Otherwise, you can't maintain a current or you can't maintain a closed loop and then accordingly you cannot maintain a current. So to make it on, to make it conductive, we need at least 20.7 volt. So to make this center on, we need 20 volt. To make the silicon diode on, we need to maintain at least 20, uh, 0.7 volt across it. So then all together, we need to maintain 20.7 volt across its time. So it means if you maintain your input voltage VI, which is greater than or equals to 20.7, then center and the normal diode gets on. If you maintain your input, which is greater than or equals to 20.7, so then both center and the normal diode gets on and you can see a kind of a current flow through this. Okay. So what's the current? So the current would be VI input voltage minus 20.7. So the entire drop across the center and the rectifier are divided by R. So this is the current flow through the network. So VI is basically VI is basically 60 sine omega t so then you may basically get a kind of a sinusoidal type of a current and you can see a kind of a sinusoidal type of current through the network so this is the way so if you maintain at least 20.7 across these two terminals a and b so that 20.7 is more than sufficient to make this center diode on and make this rectifier diode on. Yes, done. So then what about the voltage across the center? The voltage across AC equals 20. So this 0.7 is appear across this silicon diode. So then the voltage appear across the system is exactly equals to the voltage across the center. So then this is actually equals to the center voltage. We said should be equal. To. So this is equals to center. So the voltage across the terminals A and C is the center voltage and center gets on and it maintains a 20 volt fix. Okay. So if you draw the input, so this is your input signal. So this is 60. Now we found that we need to maintain uh, like a 20.7 to cut off or 20.7 volt to make this conductive. So once this conductive, this is 20. So this is the conductive region. So this threshold is 20.7. 
So you can draw a line parallel to this time axis at 20.7 and you can easily find the switching point. So this is one switching point. So this is the other switching point. So you can just pro pro uh, project it to here. So then you can identify. So this is the conductive region. So once it's conductive, the output voltage, which is basically appear across the system is 20 volt. So then during this, we basically have 20 volt, not 20.7. It switched at 20.7. So it basically switched at 20.7. Once it's on, it maintains 20 volt across the system. Okay, so clearly identify these two points. So this particular system basically switched at 20.7, but the output voltage would be the voltage across the center, which is equal to 20. So the whatever the figure given in the slide said, you can't see this uh, difference. But it should be like switching is basically at 20.7 and the output voltage is basically at 20. So what happens to the other regions? So, if, so it means we are not capable of maintaining 20.7. So then definitely once you reduce the voltage less than that, so then, so the silicon diode may not be conductive. So it creates a kind of open circuit elements. It it's get forward path and this would be the output. So this is basically 20. This is basically zero. Okay, so this is the simple output across this channel diode. So once you apply a kind of a 60 volt peak to peak sinusoidal. Yeah. So when the center get burned, so we uh, identify this characteristic. So it's something like that. So this is V Z, and we highlighted one point I Z max. So it means this particular element can maintain a fixed voltage across its terminal while absorbing this additional current. So this is, so most of the circuits, if you want to maintain a fixed regulated or fixed, D, uh, fixed constant voltage across any device, so this should be basically connecting parallel. So if you want, so let's assume this kind of, so this is your system. So this, this system needs to maintain like a 25 volt over the time. So then what we can do is we can connect a center diode in parallel with that having a center voltage of 25. So if you want to maintain a regulated output, so if you want to maintain a fixed or regulated output, so center If you want to maintain a fixed or regulated output, center is in parallel. With the, the element, the system. Okay, so if you want to maintain a regulated output across the system, 
So always this CNN should be parallel. Okay. So then, like for example, now the characteristic of this is something like that. Here it's Vz, it's an air voltage, so we have maximum current I, Ezm. Let's think about this scenario. So you have a current I, so this is IS system current, this is the center current. Okay. Now the if we consider this system, let's assume we will just uh, forget about this system. So we'll draw a resistor. So we have a resistor. Okay. So this is IR. And this. Again. So what happens if we consider the resistor? Resistor. So we know that if it is a resistor, this should be satisfied. The voltage across the resistor should be a product of the current and the resistance. Okay. So this is, let's assume this is fixed. R is fixed. So then what happens if I increase the current? What? So if I now I guess you can see. Yeah. Okay. So if I increase the current, ideally voltage also should be increased if your resistor is fixed. Okay. So let's assume that, yeah, so this is the case. If if we consider a resistor, so it basically following this Ohm's law, and once you increase the current while keeping the resistance at a fixed value, definitely voltage also should be increased. But why we plug this center here is to maintain this voltage at a fixed value. Like for, for this case, it's 25 volt. So then all the time, the voltage across the resistor would be 25 because we will connect a center diode in parallel with that resistor. So the center, so we will definitely maintain a reasonable voltage to make the center on. So then we know that voltage across the center would be 25 volt. So then whether the center, so whether we change any parameter in the circuit, so center, if the center is on, it basically maintain a fixed voltage of Vz. So which is 25 volt in this particular case. So then it means all the time your res voltage across the resistor would equals to Vz. Because this, that's the purpose of having the center diode in parallel with the resistor. So we need to have a regulated output across this resistor, which is equals to 25 volt at any time. With whatever this uh, input, whatever the load, so you should maintain this 25 volt across this center uh, diode. 
so this is all all the time the this voltage is basically constant and equals to vz so now what happens vz equals ir this is fixed now if i increase this so then this equation or this condition is basically not satisfied once you increase current definitely you have to increase the voltage to maintain this relationship v equals i r as it is so if your voltage is fixed by some other external device you cannot increase the current because this this product should be constant no? if you increase the current there should be a mechanism to increase the voltage otherwise you basically violating the ohm's law equals ir but with by connecting the parallel sender diode to the circuit so we are maintaining a fixed voltage across the resistor so then basically resistor itself does not have any chance of increasing its current okay so this because we are maintaining a fixed voltage across the sender uh, resistor which is equals to the sender voltage and at the same time so we are not giving any provisioning to increase its current because if it try to increase the current so then definitely we it basically violating the ohm's law because v z is a constant this is also constant so v z is a constant r is fixed and constant so then automatically this also set to fix set to fix value otherwise you can't maintain this ohms so then what happens if we increase ir so what happens if we increase ir so this is fixed no chance to change this is increasing and if you apply kirch of current law we know that il should be equals to i is it plus ir this is fixed so this is increasing so then only option is increase your sender current increase your sender current so it means so this you can basically move the q point or the operating point of the sender along this line by increasing the sender current okay so initially it would be somewhere here if you further increase your il so then uh, this voltage across the resistor is fixed and the current flow through the resistor should be fixed so then this excess current should be absorbed by the sender diode so then easily move push this q uh, operating point to this and stay here if you further increase your load current il so then q point moves to here so likewise you can move the operating point of the sender diode along this vertical line up to this up to the current i z goes comes to i z m which is the maximum tolerable current of the sender diode if we go beyond that so it means your sender gets burned if we go beyond this i is at m so then the sender can basically burn so so that's the maximum tolerable limit of the sender diode so hope it's clear when and where the sender get burns so if you exceed the maximum sender current you can basically lost the sender okay hope you get the answer for this question so when and where the sender get burns if you exceed the maximum sender current then you can basically lose the sender yes done 
So now this basic operation, you have a kind of an idea about how the Sena get operated. So the Sena can change its operating point according to the requirement of the circuit. So for this scenario, we found that we need to maintain a fixed voltage source, uh, voltage across this resistor. So then once you set the voltage to fix, so there won't be any chance to change the current of the load or current flow through the resistor. So then if you increase the input current or the load current or whatever the current feed to the circuit, so the excess current should definitely be absorbed by the senator. Okay. So this by absorbing this excess current, the center is trying to maintain this fixed voltage across the student. So this is the simple regulation, voltage regulation. Whether we have fluctuation at the input side or load side, so it try to maintain a fixed voltage across its terminal. But keep in mind, if you main, if you are not maintaining sufficient voltage to make this center on, so then you can't see any kind of regulation. So this is in this case, it's mandatory to keep this voltage across the center at V is it at least at least at VZ. So otherwise you cannot make this in on if you maintain that voltage. So then whatever the voltage fluctuation or resistor changes in the circuit can be basically managed by the center and keep that voltage fixed. Okay. So hope this is clear. So we'll uh, uh, go through a couple of uh, scenarios where we can regulate the voltage. So then you can see. So the first case. So this is the circuit. You have a load, you have current limiting resistor, you have a center. Okay. And here you have a source. So once you uh, see the polarities of the uh, source, you can easily recognize that. So here it's a minus, here it's plus. So we are basically reversing this center. Okay. So let's assume a scenario where this volt input voltage source is fixed. So it means VI is fixed and this is also fixed. So we have a fixed load and a fixed input. So what happens? We need to maintain, we need to maintain VZ all across RA. Okay, so this is the requirement. So this is the requirement. We need to maintain VZ walls across RA. So this is the requirement. So for this scenario, we are very fortunate. Input and the resistor load is fixed. Okay. So to, how do you maintain a voltage across this RL at VZ? So then only option is so the center we connect in parallel with RL should push it to on region. If the center is on, so then basically the center can maintain a voltage of VZ. So how do you make it on? So the idea here is 
need to on the center so how do you on the center so we have to at least maintain v is it across this one at least maintain it so if you just map it to the uh, characteristic so it's like this okay so if you increase your input along this line until this point so then so this is the minimum voltage that we need to maintain to make this center okay so this is the minimum voltage so so we can identify two regions so if uh, if i okay so we can identify two regions now the minimum current i is in minimum is zero for the uh, easiness we set it to zero so it may be less than i mean just uh, above zero slightly above the zero but for the ideal case we can set it to zero and we have this maximum center current we have this center voltage and we can identify two regions right if your q point or the operating point of the center is basically lie on this horizontal axis you can't see any current so your center current is zero so this is valid up to this point once you once the voltage appear across the center is just reached v z your current is still zero and if you just increase your in applied voltage slightly above from v z then this q point or the operating point moves to this vertical so we can basically identify two regions one is this block so the other one is this block so during this block we can argue that while keeping the center current at zero we can increase the voltage up to we say Okay, while keeping the center current at zero, we can move the voltage up to VC. If you just add a se several micro volts beyond VC, so then this operating point simply jumps to this vertical line. Okay, so then we can argue that to make this on. At least you need to maintain a VZ volt across this A and B. Okay, so let's assume now we are increasing the input voltage from zero to some value. So it means the operating point of the center dot moves from here initially zero, then gradually increase. So it's moving like this. Until here, until that point, you can't see any notable current. Once you move your center voltage beyond that, this moves to vertical, like this. So then only you can see a very small current. So we, then we can argue that if this is the operating point for this scenario. You can think of I is at zero and V equals V is at case. I is at zero means the current flow through this branch is zero because this center diode is still off. And if you refer this operating point at this point, so now this is the operating point. So 
we can model that particular operating point. The voltage across the sinus C is it, B is it, but still you don't see any current flow through this one. Okay. So if you don't see any current flow, you can basically assume that no current flow through the sinus. So this is like open circuit. But across this A and B, we have V Z. Okay, got the point, I guess. So then you can easily get a condition for the input voltage to maintain this dial uh, center on. So it's something like that. So we have resistor one, resistor two. So this is RL, this is R. So this is the place you are connecting a center. So this is VR. So then by applying voltage divider rule, we can simply say that the voltage across RL equals RL divided by R plus RL into VI. So this voltage, this voltage should be equals to EZ2 on the center. So the, so the argument here is, so once you gradually increase your input, your Q point of the uh, center is basically move along this horizontal line, this I, I equals zero line, this line. Okay, so at a given point, so then the voltage across the center reach to V Z, but the still the current is at zero. So once you move your input voltage slightly above that one, so then the Q point moves to this vertical line. Then you can see a current. So if we uh, stick into this boundary region, so you can argue that so Zena is maintaining a voltage of V is it while flowing zero current through itself. So because the argument is why we need to make it open circuit. For example, if you have if you create a conductive path along this, you cannot apply the voltage divider rule. For example, if you create a conductive path here, it means you have a resistor here. So then you have to consider the parallel combination to evaluate the voltage. So that's why we try to make it open circuit. Then we can easily apply the voltage divider. Otherwise you have to consider the parallel combination of that. So that's why we stick into this boundary region and claim that if you maintain a V Z while keeping this I Z zero. So assuming that Q point or the operating point is at this edge. So this is the boundary region where you uh, center goes to on or off. So now we can claim that now we are in the boundary region and the voltage across the center is still V Z and no current flow through them. So then we can easily or directly apply the voltage divider rule and get the condition. So then from this, we can think of what would be the input voltage. So input should be equals to one plus R O R L V is it. So this is the voltage that circuit maintains as input. So if you basically set your power supply voltage to one plus R O R L times V Z, so then we know that and it's guaranteed that your center gets on if you just increase your input 
slightly above that amount so then definitely you can claim that this gets oh. so what about the current flow through the network so it's maintaining we said here we are maintaining we said here and this is vi and the current flow through this branch is vi minus v z over <clears throat> okay so this is fixed and this is the current flow through this one is v z over r so this current flow through this one i r okay so if you go beyond this value so this is the minimum voltage you need to maintain to make this enone if you go beyond that it means you are increasing the supply voltage so if you increase the supply voltage we know that definitely if you increase this one if you increase the supply voltage so the current flow through this branch get increase but you don't have any chance to increase this current irl because we are making the voltage across rl at a constant value of vz so then the excess current should flow through the senator so it means your q point move from here if you further increase your input so this additional excess current is basically created by the senator and by moving this q point to this if you further move it so likewise you can simply adjust the operating point of the senator along this vertical axis okay so this is the way we can manage the fixed voltage across r if you increase your input so it means we are basically loading a heavy current to the circuit so this excess current is basically managed by the sender diode to plug into the circuit so we have a sender here so excess current is basically absorbing absorbed by the sender while keeping this one constant okay so then you can think of what would be the minimum and maximum voltages that diode uh, sender can tolerate or that particular circuit can tolerate so this is the minimum so this is the minimum because if you are not maintaining this much of voltage your sender never gets on so this is the input minimum you need to maintain input minimum is 1 plus r over r l into vz v is the is the sender voltage once you select the sender so you know that the sender voltage whether it's 3.3 or 5.7 or 6.2 or 20 so it's known r and r l r l is our load and r is the current limiting resistor once you set it fixed so you can easily find the minimum voltage you need to maintain at the input to make this sender on so this is the minimum okay so this is the minimum because if you maintain this one you we can guarantee that sender gets on so what would be the maximum of here what would be the max of the uh, pi max so what happens if you increase the input voltage so if you increase the voltage the, the current inject to the circuit get increase and this excess current can be handled by the sender by moving this q point or the operating point along this vertical axis So up to which level that sender can manage this excess current so this is the maximum i is at them okay so we this sender can manage the current fluctuations up to the level that it can handle so this is the level that sender can manage 
so if you increase your input voltage excess current can be simply absorbed by the sender and the maximum that sender can absorb is limited to i is at them so until i is at them you can increase your input until i is at them until the sender current or this operating point of the sender dot moves to this its maximum or the last point you can increase your input until then the excess current can be basically handled by the sender so at that time point so when your input goes to its maximum sender current goes to its maximum i is at them okay so it's, so now we are referring the scenario where your operating point is this Here. Previously, we modeled it by assuming that Q point or the operating point is here. Now, it's pushed to here. So the worst case. Here. So when your input goes to its maximum, your sender current goes to its maximum. I is it ten? So this is this can be found from data sheet. For the question, it is given. It will be given. Okay. So now, what about the current flow through the load? It's always fixed. V is a dower. This is the current flow through the load because all the time we are maintaining a fixed voltage across the load. So then the current would be fixed, and this excess current is basically absorbed by the sender. So the fixed current is V Z by R. Yes. So then the what about the total current? So the total current equals I Z dem plus I R n. So this is basically come from the data sheet. Data. This is always V Z over R. So you can easily find the current. So if you find the current, you can equate it to this. E equals this I L. Because the current flow through this is the I L. So this is sum of this one and this one. So I L is sum of I Z dem plus I R L. So we can again find the current flow through the resistor by subtracting these two voltages V I minus V Z divided by the resistor. So make so you can equate this one and find the V I maximum. So hope it's clear. So this is the case where your load is fixed, but your input is changing. So for these scenarios, you can find the minimum and the maximum input voltage that this sender can manage. For this particular scenario, your input is not fixed. Now this is variable. Now this is varying. So this is fixed. So in that case, you can easily identify the range of range of your input. What is the minimum voltage that particular sender can own? What is the maximum input voltage that sender can tolerate through this maximum current? So these are the two extremes, V i minimum and V i maximum. So then this is the range that sender can manage. So then it means if you have fixed load here, and if you basically connect to a kind of a oscillating type of a voltage source, so the sender can manage that changes. If your fluctuations are basically so if you 
So let's have the, this is your vi max. So this is your vi min. Okay, so these are the two extremes. This is vi min. Okay, let's assume this is the our, uh, input. So this is the fluctuation of the input. So what happens during this block? Your input is exceeding its maximum. So it means your center gets burned. So you cannot manage this one. So it means you have to precisely find out the maximum input and the center maximum. So you cannot increase your input voltage beyond the center's maximum. So the center's maximum, this is the center max. The, this is the input ma volt maximum input voltage that particular center can manage based on its I is it in this maximum center current. So if you take a center and evaluate it and find out the I max or the maximum input voltage that particular this the selected center can manage. So so then you should be more uh, serious once you change your input. So if you change your input beyond this VI max, so like here, so during this case, so Sena get lost. lost. So what about during this block? So during this region, the input is simply dropping below V minimum input. So this is the in minimum value that we need to maintain to on the center. Yeah, so, so if your input is simply go be down below that threshold, we are minimum. So then we are not maintaining the minimum voltage that need to be there to make the center on. So during this block, then what happens in a get off? So then you can't see any voltage regulation or fixed voltage. If your input is simply dropping below this v minimum of Vi, so then this center gets center. You can't maintain this center in the on region. So if you exceed your input voltage, beyond the specified maximum so then your center get burned so then this is the region where you can regulate through this center so you basically select a center dial depending on the requirement for example so if you have load here and you need like five volt so you have to connect the center having a five volt center voltage. So then you search a couple of data sheets and find out which center gets I. So because along with that, you have to think of I, Z, max as well. So then if you know these two values, center voltage and I, Z, max, you can find out the region where you can manage the input fluctuations so this this region so then based on that you can decide it. or else you can have the other way around for example so you know that if you have this uh, capacitor in a uh, 
uh, full wave rectification. So we have this bridge rectifier. Uh, and you know that once you connect a capacitor, so this output gets smooth like this. So it's something like that. So from this one, you can think of, see, so we have minimum value, so we have maximum value. So this is the maximum, this is the minimum. So then you can think of what would be the ideal center for this case. So then the uh, you are matching the, uh, the requirement of the center by considering this ripple voltage. Once you connect a capacitor at the end of the output of the full wave rectificate, rectified signal, so you can see a kind of a smooth uh, kind of a smoothing process like this, as shown in here. So this is the smoothing process. So then, based on the ripple waveform, how much that uh, output is fluctuate around. So you can think of a base center which we can give a kind of a uh, center exact regulated output. So you can do these two approaches. So you can get the specification of the input and decide what center would be ideal. At the same time, based on the uh, load which we need to connect, and based on the requirement of that load, you can decide a center and calculate back to backward and find out what are the minimum and maximum ranges of your input. So similarly, you can change your load as well. If you change the load for a fixed input, if you change the load for a fixed input, Again, you can similarly calculate the maximum and minimum resistor ranges you can manage through the center. So it's given in the slide set. You can just go through this one. So there are three scenarios. The very simple scenario is you have this load and the input voltage is fixed. So nothing to evaluate, but uh, so you can basically specify the input voltage to maintain this fixed voltage across the load. So to maintain this fixed voltage, we basically need to on the center diode. So that voltage would be basically linked to the input voltage and input should be aligning with that. So whatever the input should at least maintain a VZ voltage across the center diode to maintain. So if your input is varying, while your load is fixed, you can find the ranges of this input, maximum and minimum that particular center can manage. So the third option is like your input is fixed and you have a variable load. So then again, you can similarly calculate the range of resistance value, what would be the minimum and what would be the maximum which can manage the fixed voltage across its terminal. So in that case, so you have a current limiting resistor and a variable load. This is variable, you have a center here and source here. So then this is, this is VI, so this is fixed and this is variable, changing. So in that case, you can basically find RL minimum and RL maximum. So within that range, the center can maintain a VZ voltage across this load. If you go beyond that limit, you cannot manage the regulated voltage across it, across this load. So we basically discussed three scenarios. One is both VI and RL fixed. 
second case vi is variable r l fixed third case vi fixed r l variable so you should be able to analyze these scenarios for the last two cases you have to find either uh, range for the input voltage or range for the uh, load depending on the which parameter gets varied so the second case your input is varying so then definitely you have to find the uh, minimum and maximum input range so the third case your load is changing so then you have to uh, find the minimum uh, load and the maximum load which basically maintain this fixed voltage of vz okay so so a couple of examples were given in the slide set so you can go through these and uh, basically so i am trying to evaluate your knowledge in these three scenarios how if you can manage to evaluate this ranges so then it's fine and you should be uh, aware how we can utilize this cns in different type of circuits so the one is like uh, we can have a kind of a regulated output or fixed output or sometimes if you want to make a reference voltage we can use a cn for example uh, <clears throat> so if you uh, have a kind of idea about operational amplifiers so you can put a cn volt uh, cn diode to uh, provide the reference if you have a comparator circuit again you can use this one or else if you use a transistor circuit so if you want to bias it at a different level in different uh, uh, re region so you can set the sena to the uh, base of the transistor to make it bias properly so likewise you can use the senas for uh, getting this reference voltages at the same time you can use the sena to get this regulated output so this is for the today so if you have any questions so you can have a couple of times to discuss so otherwise you can uh, go through the video so unfortunately sims is not allowing us to share this video at the moment so i'll share it to dilank and uh, he basically can drop it to your whatsapp so i'll make it a youtube link and share it with you so if you don't have any questions so we can wind up the session so if you have anything so you can uh, share it with me so we can have a look on that okay then thank you very much same to you